There's a few words that you should know about. It's the BISOC Server 2013. That's probably why you guys are here. It's the Azure BISOC Services, which is pretty cool, unless you're an admin. Azure BISOC Server 2013 on the virtual machines on the Azure side. So I don't know if you guys remember how Microsoft a couple of years ago said, move to the cloud. Everybody has to move to the cloud. So they changed it. So they tell you to have whatever you have on premises, but you can move on to hybrid solutions. And by this, they mean you can use the Azure basic services. You can use some of the Azure virtual images or whatever you want. And then eventually everybody hopes you're going to end up on the cloud. So I'll go into the base talk 2013. You guys have seen some of these adapters in <coughs> some of these adapters uh, in use today. So uh, I'm no developer. I'm an admin. So I know nothing about how you can use these. I don't know how you code it in Visual Studio, if that's what it's called. Some programming. I heard some guy saying developing basic application is drag and drop. So maybe I could do it. <laughs> what I really enjoy is whenever they bring me something that's improved. So you might have heard that improve the MLP adapter. So who's with the hospital here? What? Oh, Saravana? What, what? No, never mind. Who's with the hospital, working with hospitals, medical? Okay. Who uses the MLP adapter? Who thinks it's terrible? <laughs> oh, very good. So what I've changed, the MLP adapter usually got one file and then sent it out before it could take a new one, right? Terrible. The new thing is it can take multiple files. So the adapter is actually 300 to 500% faster, according to Microsoft, than what it was. So whoever works with medical companies or at a hospital, whatever, this is good news. And some of the bugs has been fixed as well, uh, like the port. If you have a receive port with MLP or a send port, especially send ports, it could go down on the side you were actually communicating with. However, the send port would still be open running and acting as if it was actually fine. So that should have been fixed now, according to Microsoft. And then one of the cool things that I really enjoy, dependencies. So since I'm a basic admin, I get, by the way, who's developers here? Bistock developers? Okay. Who's admins? See, I love the admins, so. <laughs> this is for the developers. When you guys develop, you usually have some dependencies, right? And then over time, we end up with whatever crap we might get. You saw Nino talking about all those crappy applications. We are the guys stuck with it. We have those 910 schemas or whatever, and Whatever happens when something goes down somewhere, who are you going to blame? Us. So now we can use the dependencies in BizDoc to actually see who's using this pipeline, who's using this orchestration, how is this bound. Though there's one thing that is lacking and that you should be aware of. If you're having like filters, let's say you have a send port. The send port has a filter to take messages coming in from a receive port. That will not show up on dependencies. So be careful about just, oh, I see this send port is just not doing anything, or this receive port is not doing anything, and you delete it, and you're actually stopping some message, message flow. <clears throat> so what I did, I did a small test. I had one machine, 8 gigs of RAM. It was running Windows Server 28 R2, SQL Server 28 R2, and BISOC 2010. I did a very, very simple test. So I'm no developer, but I know my ways to do stuff. I just talk to a developer. <laughs> tell him that if you're not doing this, I'm telling my manager about your crappy developer code or the way you do stuff, so you have to do this for me. And he did. So I got this application. It's using the WCF NetTCP, which is one of the fastest adapters. And it's basically just a pass-through out to a file share. So my first test was with 2010. Then I did a new test. Everything upgraded to 2013. Same machine, just scratched it, upgraded. And this was the result. And that's actually pretty amazing. I can say that this is just BizDoc. It's probably Windows Server, SQL, and everything combined. So just upgrading gives you better performance. 
However, if I would have used the MLP adapter, you guys can imagine what that percent would be. But that's not the case. Who's, who's planning on upgrading to 2013, by the way? Everybody should take your hand off. Come on. <laughs> Who, who's going who's to sit on 2010? Sit two hands, four hands. So then eventually everybody's going to upgrade. See? Who's going to use the Azure Bistock services then? <laughs> okay, cool. Fix it first. So, yeah, fix it first. It's cool. It works. I've seen it. It's simple and easy in a way. I saw the presentation where they did it. The developers, they just dragged and dropped. Looks very easy. Well, it is. It's kind of easy. And you have your application as cloud. <laughs> However, there's one thing that I'm a bit worrying about as an admin, because we talked about Sarvana saying that he had clients with 900 to 1,000 applications. I've seen clients with 975 applications. First of all, the admin console, try opening it up. Good luck. It's not going to work. I believe the limit is like 250 applications, and then it just stops. So this is a good thing, except you then have about 1,000 pages you have to monitor as a BizDoc admin if you're using this. So there's some changes that has to be done there. Either way, it's easy to administrate. You just go online. So you can use your phone or your Surface or your iPhone or iPad. And then the Azure BizDoc Server 2013. So this is the one you have online, Azure. Who's been using Azure to set up a BizDoc server? VM? Yes, VM, yeah. And again, how many developers do we have? OK. So how long do you spend setting up a BizDoc server, a developer machine for yourself on-prem? How long? I heard too long, but like, give me some exact. From when you order that virtual image till you actually have your develop machine up and running. Three hours. Windows update. Windows update. Yeah, fantastic. I love it. So three hours. I, I did it for fun. I set up an environment containing four BizDoc servers and a SQL cluster. 25 minutes. So what really happens is when you set up a new server, you choose that I want BizDoc 2013 whenever it's in beta or if it's CTP or whatever you're choosing, eventually it's going to be live. It takes about one, two minutes, and it's up and running. Then you have to go in and configure it, which takes about, if you know how to do it, admins obviously know, so it doesn't take long. So like that, and we're up and running. So the good thing, I'm more like some of my clients can never go on the cloud. No way. However, the developers can easily. And if they mess up, Sometimes developers do, unfortunately. It's easy to just delete it and set up a new one. It doesn't take three hours. It doesn't take a day. You don't have to call someone to get a new image. So it's rather easy to do it. As I said, it's pre-installed with BizTalk and actually SQL as well. So it's ready for you to use. Just configure it. And you guys know it's pretty easy, except when you use that basic configuration for a multi-server environment. Then you end up calling someone like Nino or me, and then I come in and say, why did you do basic? Well, isn't it just next, next, next? Well, that's true, it is. <laughs> just have to click some other options. Have a script for that? Script for that? Yeah, you can, you can create your own scripts to set it up. You have it? You provide it? I, <laughs> it depends. I don't have it with me. You can get one if you want. I, I have a PowerShell script to do it. However, I prefer to do it manually because I feel I have more control. And after all, you have different requirements when it comes to security and all the different clients. So you have to moderate and, and change it a bit for every client. So, but when you, I think I've set up about. Some guidelines to do that? Or? Pardon? Some guidelines to do that on the cloud? Are there specific things that you. On the cloud, it's rather easy. You, you can, you, yeah. If, if you're going to do it on the cloud as a developer, I can send you my PowerShell script. It's a basic setup. Yeah. So it. And everything's up. Yeah. So, it's, but if you're setting it up at a, as a multi-server environment, yeah. you might have to modify it a bit. But as a developer machine, it's no problem. And then you can complete the BizDoc 2013 setup in no time. So that was the BizDoc stuff. You guys have seen all the new stuff already, so there's no point of me actually going through it all. So who's been trying out Windows Server 2012? 
Not that many. Who's interested in new technology? <laughs> okay, I just had to make sure. Now there's a lot of stuff that's new to Windows Server, and, and I'm an integration MVP, which means I should know something about BizDoc and integration. And obviously I should know something about Windows Server. But when I made this presentation, I actually had to go in and read myself, because I don't know everything about everything. So the same thing here, I'll go through some of the stuff, but you will get the slides. And if you want to read more about it, you can open it up, and the notes will have a lot of links to more information. So what's improved, what's new? So who's setting up environments like every now and then? Everybody should have their hands up, your developers or admins. Who's never set up a basic environment? OK. It's very easy. It's next, next, next. <laughs> so there is an upgrade to the failover clustering. So they improved a lot of stuff, especially you can now have failover clustering over 64 nodes or 8 thousand virtual machines and one of the benefits obviously is higher availability easier to use and this obviously is for enterprise client so my dad's small hospital is never going to have 8,000 virtual machines Hyper-V who uses Hyper-V okay that's good by the way what we're talking about virtualized platforms what virtual, virtualized platforms are supported by BizTalk? Do you guys know? Because that's a question I get all the time. Yeah. Anybody heard about SVVP certified? Well, there's a lot of them. So now after VMware version 3.4, I believe, it was supported by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, before you're setting up BizTalk on a virtualized platform, make sure it's SVVP certified if it's not Hyper-V. That's a free, free tip. If you want, you can uh, buy me a beer for it. I'm not giving you a document or anything. That was just, uh, and it was free. So the Hyper-V run multiple operating system on the, t on the same time on one computer. It's easy to use. So for developers and consultants running at a client, whatever, they might work with Base.2010, 2009, 2006. We still have 2000 running in Norway. So you might have a lot of different setups. And the snapshotting is faster. It's better. Um, you have live migration. You can do it live. It's easier. The group policy. So who's, who's responsible for group policies? Who's done that? Who's been messing in AD? Active Directory before. OK, a few of you guys have done it. Who knows what a user group, a group is? A user? Good password policies. Okay, a few of you guys, that's good. So, a lot of the stuff that's been updated, improved, or even added as new on Windows Server is a lot of the stuff about group policy. So those of you guys that's been messing around knows that there's a lot of different stuff that's difficult or hard or you were lacking. And one of the biggest things is why a lot of companies eventually upgraded to Windows 7 from whatever they had before, XP usually, was XP startup. <sighs> go take some coffee. Oh, still not. Oh. <laughs> go get another cup of coffee. So Windows 7 improved performance, and then Windows Server, and the same with Windows 8, improved. So faster log on, um, easier to manage policies for those using it, and obviously the sign-in optimization. So if you have an enterprise, signing in will go a lot faster. Networking, and that is one big important thing for BizTalk. And why is it important for BizTalk? I'll buy a beer to the guy that can answer it. Yeah, well, basically, BizTalk is using network all the time. It's so it's kind of like, it's <laughs> yeah. So there is a lot of stuff that's improved. You might not necessarily work with it. And usually when I'm at a client, they run BizTalk as an enterprise client. So when I have problems with network, or I want to set up a subnet, I'm not doing it. I'm asking a network guy. Either way, it's good for me to know that something has changed, because that network guy might not know it. So NLB, used a lot by BizTalk, is improved. Remote access, DNS, uh, improved the branch cache. Hyper-V is improved, so it goes faster. 
Security auditing. That's one thing they kind of miss in BizTalk. If you terminate a message, it says terminated by user. I, I always thought it was a bug. Like, we don't, we don't bother adding the name. It's just, let's just have it this way for a while. So this is not affecting BizTalk in any way uh, when you terminate a message. But it will help you to maintain and make sure that everything is working. If somebody messes up, you can make sure that you can see who it was. I have a funny, funny story about that. I was um, working at a company in, in Norway, and uh, I was responsible for a system. And I had access to a database. Only me and the guy using that system had access to that database. And I never went into the system. It always worked until one day he calls up. Why did you delete my database? What? Why did you delete my database? Well, I haven't deleted anything. Well, you have to. I have not done it since we're the only one with access. So what really happened is I got the blame for it. I didn't do anything. And I had to finish off and do some recovery and try finding that database. And obviously, the backup job stopped one <coughs> month ago. So that's my fault, obviously. But either way, now there's more auditing. There's more option to actually making sure that stuff are not happening by user. You get the actual name. And that's one of the things I love about Bisoc 360 by the way, as an admin, if someone deletes something, I know who did it. So instead of blaming me, I can go and blame the actual guy doing it, or the girl. So server manager, who uses it? Come on. Who doesn't use server manager? OK. <clears throat> They're not admins. So they improved it. And they did it first for 2008 R2, and they approved it even more. So I believe it's kind of like they're making it easy. My daughter, in two and a half, she can use it now. She can stop my computer, start my computer, install IIS. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Delete biz talk. She's done that a couple of times. So Microsoft had an idea to keep it simple. So everything is more like simple now. I believe maybe next version, you can have touch screen and you can administrate your BizTalk environment. I don't know. They're trying to make it simple, easier, and faster. So the server manager is easier, it's faster, and it's better. So those who hate the server manager in 2008 R2, I hope you're going to love it in 2012. Deployment services. So this might not affect everyone, but a lot of people have to install operating systems. So it's been a hassle. It's been hard. You might have to go on the computer. You might push something out, and it's slow. You might not even know if that computer actually is reinstalled. So what happens? The company gets a virus. It spreads out everywhere. The only way to stop it is to lock down the network and then resoft every machine that got the virus. And you push out. Nothing. You don't really know if that machine actually stopped. You might ping it to see, and then ping dies, but did it actually resoft? So this is better. You can send out the setup of a network, and it's predefined it's in, by Microsoft, so it should work. That's everything from Microsoft works. I'm paid to say that. <coughs> and obviously, PowerShell. So support for PowerShell 3.0. Who uses PowerShell? Who uses PowerShell to deploy applications to BizTalk? And those guys raising their hands. Do you guys use the admin console? Why? You don't have BISO 360 or? OK. Because one of the biggest things about BizTalk that you need to be aware of is BizTalk is made for transferring files. We talked about this. Nino said it's Windows services, front end to SQL. It's an integration platform, whatever you call it. It's not designed for you to log on. Right? So you use PowerShell to do your tasks. You might have tools like BISO 360 or whatever tools you're creating yourself. So the machines are dedicated for doing their job. So obviously, PowerShell is enabling us to do a lot more, like configuring groups, setting up the environments. You don't have to do it. You don't have to log on. So PowerShell free, faster, easier, better, wonderful. <coughs> we'll jump into the SQL Server. I have a lot of time. 
So, I said that there's a lot of upgrades to everything, even SQL Server. However, Bisto kind of has a third leg, which is kind of annoying every now and then. Can somebody tell me what the newest and coolest feature in SQL Server 2012 is? Anyone heard of the always on? Yeah. yeah. And the customer have been asking for that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's really awesome. Like always on. You won't even see anything when it goes down. Except it won't work with BizTalk. And why is that? MSDTC problem. Yeah, the third leg, MSDTC. So it's a cool feature. It's actually really, really cool. But it's not gonna work with BizTalk. But if you're setting up something, it's nice to know that you actually got that always on feature. Making sure that if you have a failover, it will go, won't really go down. So we talked about archiving messages earlier today. We have some clients that want to do the same thing. So what they're doing, they have in the tracking database and they have their own data warehouse. So they put the tracking data over there and they read the logs. So every 15 minutes, they take those logs into the data warehouse. And the always on function in SQL will make sure that data, that database is always on. So it's an okay way to archive messages or archive tracking because you will have that forever and ever. However, we all know that tracking is growing and growing and growing. It's rather big, so you might want to do some cleanups as well. SQL Server multi-subnet clustering. Who knows what a subnet is? Who's heard about a subnet? What is the best performance optimizing tips for BizTalk? <laughs> Subnets. Right? If you put BizTalk in a subnet, according to Microsoft, you can get 300% performance optimization. So SQL Server multi-subnet clustering actually enables you to set up a subnet over areas. It doesn't have to be in that specific server room. It can be. Uh, on um, um, one in Norway and then one in Asia or in Australia and it will still be the same subnet and clustering though it won't be really fast by the way that's called stretch clustering or something like that so it provides disaster recovery and a high availability so you still have cluster but it doesn't have to be on the same location and this is probably something you guys know a lot more about me XML extensible markup language. So the selective XML index, improved performance, scalability, reduced storage costs. It's basically another type of XML index. You guys have heard about this before? Some of you? Okay. Because this is on development stuff. I'm just taking in because XML, isn't based on using XML for something? Yeah. <laughs> something about no. So it's improved the uh, scalability reduced storage costs, smaller files, and um, uh, uh, improves the performance for queries towards the SQL. Who uses SSIS? Who loves it? Okay, it's a cool feature. So a lot of companies, uh, and one of the biggest um, BizTalk clients in, uh, in Scandinavia is using BizTalk as the integration platform. However, they're using SSIS as well for larger files. So now we've been having troubles every now and then with deployment, adding new whatever. But in 2012, it's improved. You can manage run and configure runtime values for any packages. So if something happens, or you might do an update, this goes pretty fast compared to taking it down, putting it back up again, clustering it, whatever. It could be a hassle. Obviously, performance. Reduce the memory usage um, simply by merge and merge join transformation. So incre increasing the performance for all of the functions in the SSIS, again, gives you better performance. I have no exact test over this, but some guy told me 15, 20%. I know that guy hasn't always said the truth, so you might want to double check that before you write it down and confirms it. And if you do, send me an email. SQL Server. Support for PowerView. So who's used PowerView? Okay, do you guys love it? Yeah. 
Me too. So finally, it's supported. So for Microsoft Excel 2013 and SharePoint 2013. So again, good things. Stand still. So hard to stand still and not curse. I mean, say bad words. So replication support, always a part of the always on function. Uh, again, doesn't, Bistock can't use it. So if you're not, just, if you're just working with Bistock, this is just forget it. If you're using SSIS maybe, or you're using SQL for other stuff, have that in mind. And obviously, general performance optimization. This is for SQL, Windows Server, and BizTalk. Any questions? <coughs> I've been going through it fast because I said, hurry up. Any questions? Now, everybody's ready to jump on 2013. Yeah, that's the spirit. And I didn't see any cell phones, so everybody gets, or at least those who signed up, will get a drink. Okay, so next slide. This is how you contact me. I know, I know that picture. I look a lot better in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best picture I can find on the internet. Thank you so. very much. <laughs>